Hi, my name is Jonathan Standing. I'm a freelance concept artist and illustrator. I've worked for the last 10 years in print media for tabletop gaming and the last six uh, in video game development and television production. This is a really brief tutorial to introduce the basics uh, and the fundamentals of custom, custom brush creation in Photoshop um, and specifically how to create a graphic brush. Um, before we begin, um, I, just to let you know what I'm running uh, on my computer, this is Photoshop CS4. I use a MacBook Pro uh, laptop and I'm using a Wacom Intuos uh, tablet and stylus. So to begin, um, let's talk a little bit about what a brush in Photoshop is. A brush in Photoshop is simply a shape um, that you've called out to the program to be used as a brush. Photoshop will then create instances of that shape uh, along a brush stroke uh, that you make on the canvas. You can control the uh, regularity of those uh, shapes um, and the size and the opacity using the custom brush palette, um, but we're going to get into that in a little bit later. So we'll pause for now and I'll talk about uh, brush size and resolution. Um, when you're making a brush, it's worthwhile taking a moment to think about what the application of the brush is going to be. If you work at print resolution, 300 dpi, it's advantageous to make your brush at 300 dpi. And even if you can, make the physical size of the brush slightly larger than you need. That way, when you scale, the size of the brush up and down when you're using the brush you won't notice any significant loss in quality uh, of the shapes that the brush makes. If you make your brush at a very low resolution or at a very low size the more that you scale it up the greater are the chances that you're going to see a loss in quality of what the brush produces. The other thing to uh, bear in mind when making your brush is what color you make it with. You can make a brush with any tone of uh, grey from the color selector, but I would strongly recommend using black every time you make a brush. The simple reason for this is that when you use the opacity slider with the brush tool in Photoshop, when you have it turned all the way to 100%, you expect to have a 100% opaque brush stroke. If you've made your brush with anything other than black, you won't actually be getting 100%, you'll be getting something less. So using black at the offset gives you the greatest degree of flexibility uh, for using the opacity slider with your brush in Photoshop. Okay, another thing uh, to remember with making brushes in Photoshop is that Photoshop needs an active selection to produce a brush. When you go to the edit drop down menu you'll see that define brush preset is grayed out and I can't select it because nothing is selected on the canvas. So whenever I make a brush I try to make it in a fresh layer simply because I don't want any extraneous information creeping in uh, to my brush from anywhere else in the image. And this way, when you make a shape in this new layer, you can simply select the layer's contents and use that to make your brush. So for the purposes of what I'm going to do today, I'm going to make a simple rectangular shape, fill it with black. And to make it into a brush, I select my layer contents, go to my Edit drop-down menu, and select Define Brush Preset. You get this dialog box that pops up and it shows you a preview of the brush on the left hand side. Generally Photoshop squashes the brush or uh, distorts it a little bit in this preview window so if it doesn't look the way that you expect don't be surprised. But what's really useful about this dialog box is that we can name our brush. That might not seem like a big deal but when you have been using Photoshop for a number of years and you've been collecting other people's brushes, your own brushes over time when you have hundreds of, of brushes in your drop-down menu, it's advantageous to have names that you can recognize uh, for them, simply because the brush uh, previews in the brush palette are relatively small, and even though they're very informative, I mean, everyone recognizes the infamous Photoshop leaf brush, for example, um, you can't always rely on them to tell you exactly what the brush does, so the name can be really useful. Um, different versions of Photoshop um, may select a new brush for you when you first make it, um, CS4 um, on the whole doesn't, but uh, the place to look for a new brush is down at the bottom of the list of brushes. So I'll select the very last brush, and you can see from the uh, brush preview shape that it is the, uh, the shape that we just made. So I'm going to hide that layer and create a new one. Scale my brush down a little bit and just make a quick stroke. So that's what our brush is doing right now, which 
um, you know, well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and there may be an application for it, it's not particularly exciting. So what we're going to do now is open our custom brush palette and uh, start to try and make this brush a little bit more useful. The first time I opened this palette, I was really intimidated by what seemed to be an incredible number of choices um, in here. It's actually not maybe as um, daunting as it initially seems. Um, there are a lot of tools in here and some of them are very powerful, uh, but the best way to learn how to use this particular palette is to just roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty and uh, figure it out by trial and error. One of the great things about Photoshop um, is that there are any number of different varieties of um, effects that you can achieve with uh, this palette, uh, but sometimes they're hard to predict and so really just trial and error and kind of mucking about uh, with these controls is very often the best way to um, achieve interesting results. So we're going to start off with brush tip shape, which is probably the most basic controls for the brush. Uh, and the slider that we're going to begin with down here is spacing. Spacing dictates the uh, amount of space that Photoshop will leave between each instance of the shape of the brush. So for the purposes of what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to make a bit more space in between each instance. Um, and already, our brush looks different. It's definitely graphic, but it still isn't really interesting enough. So I'm going to check shape dynamics next. Um, in this version of Photoshop, when you check shape dynamics, um, you do get some default controls. Um, for example, size jitter switches to pen pressure. Basically what that means is a light application of pressure will give you a smaller uh, size of stroke and the more pressure you apply, the larger the stroke becomes. Um, that's a very, very useful uh, uh, tool, uh, particularly when you're trying to emulate paintbrushes and pencils and so on and so forth. But for now, I'm going to switch that to off. Um, angle jitter is also very, very powerful. Um, when it's switched off, you can see that the angle of each individual instance of the shape is dictated by the way that we originally made the brush. That is to say, each instance of the brush is just a vertical, vertical line. When I switch the angle jitter to direction, each individual instance of the shape, the angle of it, is going to conform to the direction of the stroke that we're making with the stylus. So again, for emulating physical media, pencils, paintbrushes, and so on and so forth, this is absolutely vital uh, to making an effective brush. And uh, I'm going to leave that switched on for what we're doing uh, right now. The other control that I want to use is the roundness jitter. So roundness, basically, is talking about um, this shape here. Uh, this circle is representing the, um, the shape of our, uh, our brush, uh, and we can affect the roundness by squashing the size of the shape, uh, as you can see here. What the roundness jitter does is it randomizes the um, size of the instances of the brush shape. So I'm going to turn my roundness jitter up to 80%, and you can see I've got a great degree of variety of uh, size in each instance of the brush shape. Um, this slider down here, minimum roundness, will set the parameters um, for how much the roundness jitter is going to affect uh, the size of each instance of the brush. So if you have it switched to 100%, that means the roundness of each instance is going to be 100%. You're not going to see any uh, effect from the roundness jitter. But the more that we turn the slider down, the greater degree of variety you're going to see uh, in the sizes of each instance. So I'm going to go ahead and make a brush stroke, and you can see the effect that the roundness jitter has. So if I was trying to, or oh, I don't know, emulate a cardiograph or something like that, this brush actually might be quite useful. Um, it certainly uh, gives a nice, clean effect, and it conforms to my stroke. Um, the um, Another control that I think we should uh, take a look at is uh, scattering. A scattering is really, really useful um, in terms of um, adding a bit of variety or a bit of um, uh, sort of almost chaos to the brush. If you don't want your brush stroke to be totally predictable and maybe be a little bit surprised by the uh, results, the scatter um, function is really useful. Basically, in your brush stroke preview down here, 
you have the actual stroke is an invisible line that would fall somewhere here in the middle. Um, what the scatter function does is it pushes instances of, of the brush shape away from the line of your stroke. So when we make a, uh, a stroke with a brush now, you can see that each instance doesn't necessarily conform to the line of the stroke that I'm making. It's getting further and further away with the more pressure that I apply. Similarly, uh, by adjusting the count slider, you can add more instances of your brush shape uh, into your brush stroke. Uh, and with the count jitter, you add some randomness to that. So what we've got there, it looks vaguely like a kind of bit of binary information or something like that. I'm not really sure exactly what the application for this brush would be, but um, I can see myself using this shape uh, in the background of a, a document maybe with text overlaid on it. Um, maybe if it's a tone on tone kind of uh, shape. Um, the only other uh, control that I think we should go over really quickly is in other dynamics. Um, when you go to other dynamics, you'll see opacity jitter and flow jitter are the only two selections here, and each one has a slider. These correspond to the opacity and flow controls that you have up here at the top um, in your brush controls. And basically what we can do here is rather than setting um, an overall opacity for our brush, we can make the opacity of the uh, brush stroke dependent on how much pressure we apply with the stylus meaning that when I apply a small amount of pressure we get semi-opaque brush strokes and the more pressure I apply the greater the opacity of the brush stroke. The uh, last thing that's really important to remember and in fact this is probably the most important uh, thing that I'm going to talk about with making custom brushes is that once you've made your custom brush and you've devoted some time to mucking about in here in the custom brush palette and making something that you're happy with, it's absolutely vital that you save your brush. Photoshop doesn't do it automatically for you. If I was to go into my brush palette now and select another brush, Photoshop would forget all of the changes that we've made over here in the custom brush palette. So once you have a brush that you're happy with, it's really important to select this sub drop down menu from the brush palette and select the first option, which is new brush preset. And what Photoshop does is it shows you another preview over here, and in the same way it's completely squashed. But what it does is it numbers an instance of our original uh, brush name. So vertical line brush one, I think is a fine name for what we have here. So I'm gonna click okay. And then you can see that Photoshop has added that new brush into our brush palette. And so it's there for me the next time I need to use it. So, these are some of the very basic controls of how to make a custom brush in Photoshop, and I hope it's been helpful, and thank you for listening.